in this video we do some big dive bombs, make some controversial setup changes and we finally get to race our girlfriend. Who will be the fastest driver between the two of us? Well, watch this video and find out. Hey guys, what's up? Red Actions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today we are once again back at Circuit Pottendijk Emmen to prepare for the first round of the Dutch T4 series. But unlike uh, the last two times we were here, now we will actually be testing our T4 card. So the track is looking good again like the last few times. I've also heard that the track is quite fast because, uh, well, it's been rubbed in very well because uh, there has been lots of activity here. Also, my girlfriend will be driving today, so now we can finally settle who is the better driver of the two of us. She's not here yet though, so uh, let's start unpacking everything. Alright, this thing is all put together. I uh, fucked my hand while uh, doing so. So um, let's see if it uh, will uh, run, because I don't know. Well guys, you saw it uh, works, so um, we can actually go on track, which is nice. And now we can finally see who is faster. Ben jij sneller of ik? Ik. Oh, well you heard it, we will see. Um, I already have some excuses because uh, I have tires that are from the Nations Cup, so they are very old. So uh, that's my excuse already. But uh, let's first uh, pay the track fee. Well, this thing is ready. Let's hit the track. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Pottendijk Emma once again, this time in my Tillotson T4 Senior. Tillotson T4 will be my main focus of this year because I am competing in the Dutch T4 series, of which the first round is here in Pottendijk Emma. We also did a few races in T4 last year, two in the Netherlands and the World Championship in Valencia, Spain. I decided to also race in Tillotson because I like the way the car drives and the affordability of it all. Racing in T4 is one of the cheapest forms of karting you can do and personally, I believe this is the most equal karting class there is. If you're looking to start karting, this is a brilliant first step. This year I will be doing the full season and I hope we can go to the World Championship again. Anyways, if we want to go to the World Championship, we need to start winning and that starts by mastering the track we are at. Starting out the lap on this bumpy straight, we let the 225cc T4 engine take us up to 100 kph before diving into turn 1 breaking halfway around the corner to flick the cart left and then right. We keep turning right and take a lot of curb throughout the next three corners. Not only will they allow you to take a shorter line, they also help the cart rotate, which is super important in T4. We keep to the inside in the shallow king to open up the next right hander, in which we also keep to the inside on exit to take a short line through the chicanes. Keep the cart to the inside again here to open up the next hairpin. It is important to keep up the speed through the hairpin to maximize exit speed into this flat out right hander and a little straight afterwards. Breaking hard for the last corner, flick the cart around to make that 180 degree turn as soon as possible so that we can have the cart pointed in the right direction as soon as possible. Duck behind the wheel to minimize air resistance and do it all over again here in Pottendijk Emma. To be completely honest with you all, it took me a few laps to get used to the T4 again. This thing is quite different from my Rotex cart. Sure they're both cards, but the tires, engine, chassis, seat etc are all vastly different. With a different card also comes a different setup, and the tire pressures are no exception to this rule. I didn't know the correct tire pressures for T4 at this track, so I just tried the various amount of tire pressures. The best way to do this is to just start on let's say 0.9 bars and try different pressures during the session. Here I came in to check the pressures and drop them by a few tenths. Afterwards you can immediately see that the card is sliding a lot less. Eventually when the session was over, I was still not happy with the tire pressures. That's something we had to work on for the next session. As we go out for session 2, the guy behind me thought he found a new line through the final corner. I decided not to copy that line. However, we did have some fast teammates out on track which we could learn from. 
The number 21 driver overtakes us here and starts pulling away immediately. It was clear that this year in T4 we would have some tough competition. We encountered a big group of traffic which allowed me to catch back up. When you're close to a fast driver, you can really tell where your strengths and weaknesses lie around the lap. I noticed that we were definitely strong in the technical bits, like sector 1 and the fast corners. But it also became painfully clear that we were losing time on the straights. For this hairpin here, it was because I was messing up the entry and thus the exit. For the exit of sector 1 and the final corner, I think our engine was lacking a bit of performance. Then a bit later, the number 21's chain guard decided to leave. I still wasn't happy with how the cart felt and I decided to drop the tire pressures once again. This proved to be the correct decision as I improved my lap time without slipstream. And then again. We were definitely making progress here. Right, uh, the first two sessions are now done. Uh, yeah, we had some issues uh, in the beginning with uh, the handling, but it turned out okay later and uh, after that it was fine. Then you saw that we were lacking a little bit of straight line speed. Um, it was mainly to do with our exit uh, from the last corner, but I also think it might have been a little bit the engine, but I'm not too sure about that because we're going to find it out now. Because this thing is my Nations Cup engine from last year. It has a new cylinder head. Um, so it's completely uh, 2024 spec now. And the new cylinder head makes it yeah, a little bit of a difference, especially in the higher revs, it just feels like there's a little bit more pull. But um, yeah, we have some uh, corners to work on for our driving and uh, after that, uh, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Okay then, time to see if the engines make a big difference. Like I said, this engine was used by me in last year's T4 Nations Cup in Valencia. It was an absolute beast in Valencia, so let's see what it does now. We go out behind our girlfriend Witske and number 21 card. Witske was having a bad day, so she wasn't as fast as she could be. And even though she is a fast driver, the technical issues made it so that we didn't really have much use in following her, so I decided to go after the number 21 card again. Despite the two of us getting our lap time from different parts of the track, the difference between us was only minimal in the last session. Here was a good reference point to see if our engine was faster or not, and spoiler alert, it was. Compared to our other engine, he doesn't pull away as much as last session. And if he messes up his exit, we even get a little bit closer. So this engine was definitely faster, and we now didn't have to worry about losing that much time on the straights. So much so in fact that we could now go for an overtake on the number 21 card. But a few laps later it became clear that if I didn't have slipstream, I was still not fast enough in the straight line. The drivers in my slipstream could run into the back of me with quite significant speed difference, almost giving me a whiplash, like on this occasion. I decided to let the other drivers pass again and see if I can overtake them back. First, my girlfriend. You can really see that Wieske was not having a good day with the technical issues, as we can now actually slipstream, put alongside and boom, job done. Next, the 346. We start reeling him in corner by corner and sector 1 is definitely our strongest sector. However, on the straights we once again are not fast enough, so one lap later I decided to go for this massive dive bomb. We show our nose, he leaves the door open and that is that. And I have to give credit to the 346. He left the door open like a true gentleman. I think we are really really strong in the first sector and especially turns 1, 2 and 3. We can break later than basically anyone and still get an equal or sometimes even better exit of turn 3. I think we are definitely on the right track here. Alright, big improvement. To me also with the driving I felt like we uh, already improved in the two hairpins, uh, especially uh, uh, the first one of the two. Yeah, now uh, the other good driver just wasn't pulling away as much uh, as it was last time, so that's good. Also what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to uh, switch to a little bit less track with the front because I feel like in the mid corner it just has a little bit uh, of understeer, so I'm going to change that. Which isn't really that difficult, so yeah, let's just do it. get some food because I am hungry. Yeah, so far, not too bad. I like how the car feels. The uh, second engine definitely felt a lot better, so uh, that will be my race engine. And uh, I hope we can find a little bit more time because I'm still a little bit off the pace. I need to find like a tent. Uh, but yeah, the last tents are usually the hardest ones. Yeah, I already finished everything because I'm fat. Um, Analyzing the footage right now. Um, yeah, you guys have heard my commentary about where I'm slow and where I am not slow. But uh, let's do a uh, cool transition. After we refueled our stomachs with some Dutch delicacies, I felt completely re-energized to go for another couple of laps. 
You also saw us make a setup change, adjusting the front track width. I felt like the cart was understeering in the mid corner, especially in both hairpins we are struggling with. Now I'm going to be honest, opinions on track width are divided amongst people in karting. Some people say that a wider track width gives more grip and others say it gives less. The truth is, in my opinion, somewhere in the middle. Usually when I have understeer in the mid corner, I decrease my front track width. It works for me, but there will probably be people disagreeing with me in the comments. But to just prove my point, it definitely worked on this day. We were now able to consistently run lap times of 45.4, whilst the track got slower. So that is good. However, we were still lacking straight line speed. Might be setup, might be my exits, or it might be the engine. I really could not put my finger on what it was. So, back to the drawing board. Alright, another session done. Uh, was pretty good, I think. Uh, definitely had some more pace. Yeah, we did the same lap time as uh, last session, but uh, the track felt a little bit worse. So, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, that means that we did uh, find a little bit more time ourselves. Uh, a lot more consistent than last time now. Uh, yeah, 45.4, uh, which is good. Uh, yeah, one, uh, 101, 100, 101. Good top speeds. We also know that this engine is definitely good, so uh, yeah, we are going to. Uh, oh, that's hot. We're going to now switch back to the bad engine uh, to finish the day because uh, I want to save this one for the races. So um, yeah, let's do some work. Right, this thing is ready to go again. Uh, got the bad engine on here, so yeah, I think if I can get close to my time that I did with the fast engine. I think I could be happy with that. Yeah, let's just finish off this day. It's going really great so far, and uh, yeah, let's have some more fun. As the day was now coming to an end, I felt like it was the right decision to use the slower engine to end the day. This is just to keep the good one fresh for the races. The number 21 remained our main rival for the day and we once again chase after him. We were still no match on the straight, but in T1 we start gaining, as the 21 is still very twitchy under braking. On the exit of turn 3 we are right on his bumper and our lines are pretty much the exact same through the next section. However, we struggle on the exit of the technical bit. The fast corners are once again strong for us, especially the right-hander before the hairpin. The weakest corner of the track is still weak for us as the 21 pulls away by about 1 or 2 card lengths. Final corner is a lot better however and the gap stays about the same on exit, but on top speed we still cannot keep up. All in all, not bad. We knew this engine is slower and we still have a few tenths up our sleeve with the faster engine. I think the pace looks good. Then in the final session we decided to do a long run of 30 laps. This is basically a double race length and the speed remained good all the way through. In the last 5 laps we were even able to match our best lap time with my good engine, this time without slipstream. That means that the driving was really on point, so let's enjoy a full hot lap before we end this day. That was the last session, um, yeah, really consistent in the end, uh, I feel like we have a good feeling for the cart. If you look at our lap times here, you can see that we are yeah, pretty consistent across uh, pretty much the entire session, so that's good. But uh, yeah, straight line speed is uh, nothing to write home about, which is a shame. All in all, not too bad, I think. Well guys, day's over, everything cleaned up, boom, nice. So yeah, I think that was a pretty decent day. We made some solid progress in terms of setup. Uh, also, we gained some knowledge about our engines and about the driving itself, of course. In the end, I set the exact same lap time as our main rival for today. And uh, yeah, I am uh, more than ready for the first race because next week, race week, finally. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, it really helps me when you do that. Last week, we were here in my Rotex cart, which is a lot faster. If you want to see that video, it's on screen right here. Anyways, I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.